Come here now, girl. The procedural object mod by Simon Rear is something very special indeed. If you have the time, the patience and the creativity, it will let you create virtually anything you could possibly imagine in the game engine itself. Today I will walk you through everything you need to know to get started editing existing objects and in the second half of the show we'll create this simple commemorative bench in real time. Hi, I'm Bon Bon B and you are very very welcome. First of all you'll need to head on over to the workshop. There's a link to the mod in the description down below but I'm going to actually recommend doing a search for the word procedural instead. Find and subscribe to the mod itself, but while you are here with all of these procedural search finds, subscribe to a few other items as well. There are objects, textures and even fonts. Grab a nice selection and then load up the game. As always, head on over to the content manager and enable your new items. Then launch a new or load up an existing game. Today we'll be playing on Mosisobo, our map of the month for April 2020. I'm also using a bunch of other mods in today's tutorial such as Find It, though you don't strictly need these to access procedural objects, it does add an extra level of convenience. When your game window opens you'll notice a brand new button in the top right hand corner of the screen. This switches between procedural object and regular game mode. Somewhat counterintuitively, we won't be immediately clicking on this button because right now we don't actually have any procedural objects to switch to. Let's start by selecting an object from the menu. Almost any item will do so long as it isn't terrain conforming. We'll be using this tiny one by one hotel. Before we click it down though, you'll notice that the procedural object button has changed wording to convert to PO. And this is where the magic begins. While still holding the item you want to convert, click on the button, or better still, use the hotkey Shift P. Your item is now a procedural object. How is a procedural object building different from a normal one? The answer is that procedural objects are basically editable props. Once you've converted your building, park, harbour, or whatever, it will no longer function as a traffic spawning, happiness giving agent. And while this might make you very sad, there is a way around it. To still have all of your extra benefits, for example with a police station, well, find a smaller police station and just clip it inside the exterior walls of your procedural object instead. Another important note is that procedural objects cannot be selected with move it. If you want to move a procedural object, you'll need to use the procedural object mod. This might sound annoying, but the frustration is absolutely worth it. So back to our hotel. Now we can move it around at will, but let's click to place it down. Notice as it's now a prop and not a building, it doesn't need a row to sit on. We now have procedural objects window as well, which again we'll be ignoring for a few moments as we move back over to our original button in the top right hand corner. Clicking on this now will switch back to game mode, removing the menu and any markers, and clicking again will bring us right back. Our hotel has a button with a plus sign on it. Click on that. We now have a drop down menu, which I'll quickly fly through. Skipping over edit, which we'll do in a moment, move to switches us back to the placement mode we were just in. Note that you can rotate the item with the right mouse button and use Alt for slower movements. The next option is to copy. Click on that and then Control V. You'll be asked if you are sure you want to paste the clipboard into the selection and obviously we aren't sure about this at all, so press no. A new object will then be created and depending on the complexity of the object this might take a few moments. This will always be the case, allow your computer the time to compute. This copy will place to one side but I'm going to elevate it a little too using the page up button and that is how you duplicate. Opening the drop down on the new object you will see that the next item is set layer. Layers are a way of working with just selected parts of an object. We won't be doing this today but once you've mastered the basics you'll figure this out fairly easily. So let's skip to the next option which is align heights and luckily we've a conveniently floating building to work with. So on the object you wish to move select align heights, 
and then click on the object you wish to align to. And that's job done. The final option is the delete button, and I'm pretty sure you've already worked that one out for yourself. So let's get rid of this duplicate. Beneath this is a tiny little white box, and this is the built-in painter mod. You can adjust the main skin of the building to be any hue you desire. Your chosen color will then be shown within this little box. Right, let's do some actual editing. Click on the edit button and after a few moments, lots of grabbable nodes will appear. The more complex the building, the more nodes there will be and the longer it will take to load. Before we mess around with the nodes, let's go back to the procedural object window and select the general tool. You'll notice there are advanced edition tools. Again, I recommend learning the basics first and then play with these all you like. Back to our object. According to the bottom button, we are in position mode. This is like the move to mode, but this time we are working with the X, Y, Z axis. Page up and page down will raise and lower the object. Holding shift will do so in smoother movements. And again, holding alt will make for slower, more accurate placements. You can also click on the red, green and blue axis lines and drag that way. Clicking on the position button again, we'll switch to the scale mode. This time page up and down rescales the entire object. And again, use shift and alt for slower and smoother movements. You can also rescale each individual access for say a taller or a wider building. Click on scale and this will now switch to rotate mode. Again, use page up and down the cursor keys and with Alt and Shift or click and drag on the disks to have your very own leaning tower of crazy town. So we can now resize, rotate or even float our object. Let's do a little rough, very rough, basic editing. Click on customization and we are back to those little blue nodes. Each one can be individually selected using the mouse or you can add multiple nodes by holding down the control button. If you're having trouble choosing the exact node, you need to well, try flying inside the object and looking at the node from the inside out. So anyway, once selected, you can now move these using your mouse, though I truly recommend the cursor keys and the page up, page down button using the Alt and Shift modifiers. It takes a few moments to get your bearings, but take your time and you'll soon be making minor edits before you even know it. You can select multiple nodes using the marquee tool, or simply a click and drag using the right mouse button, and then move the entire block to create something truly wonderful, just like me. Once you've finished editing your item, you can save it using the export function. Click back on general tools, enter your name for your object in the box at the bottom and click export. Now click back to the main menu and in the second button, you'll find all of your saved creations ready for direct placement. So that's it for editing a pre-made object. How about we make something unique from scratch and in real time? This will also enable me to show you textures and text customization too. Let's delete the hotel and replace it with something very generic and very editable. A generic procedural object cube. Again, we need to convert this to procedural object by using shift P. Now we are faced with a texture window. The hotel had its own textures, but we'll be choosing our very own from those which we subscribe to from the workshop. I'm thinking granite. And again, we just need to click to place. Now for some editing. Click the plus button on the cube and edit. General tool. Click on the position to switch it to scale. And let's narrow this thing up. And let's shorten it too. We now have a nice slab. I'm going to make a copy of this for reasons which will become apparent soon enough. So click back on the main window. Click the plus button on the object, click copy, the control V, choose no, and place the object to one side. Now back to our first slab. Choose the plus button and edit, 
and we'll move above to marquee select these first two nodes using the right mouse button. Then using the cursor keys along with Alt and Shift, I'm going to taper in the front edge of the slab. Then we'll do the exact same on the other side, marquee select, Alt, Shift and cursor keys until we have a matching edge. Looking good so far. Now let's add a bench in front. We'll need a new object for this and I'm going to use that cube again. Remember, Shift P will convert to procedural object. This time we're going to choose the wooden texture so we can have a wooden bench and I've aligned the planks so that they run the length of the object so it matches up with the plaque behind. Then we're going to switch between the scale, the position and the rotate tools so that we can match this up neatly with the plaque behind. Let's get above and I think we can switch to rotate now, rotate that nice and straight. Now we just need to switch between the position and the scale tools to make sure that this fits perfectly with the plaque behind and aligns with the corners. Speaking of corners, once that's in place, we will go above, use the marquee tool and select those two nodes and edge them in and do the same at the other end too. We might need to reposition and do some tweaks for absolute perfection, but this is good enough for right now. I'm thinking I want to add a little bit of custom lighting and for this we'll plop in a couple of airport taxiway lights. Now this is not part of the procedural object mod and indeed the lights cannot actually be converted, but you can always mix and match other assets into your work. Now there's something missing from our commemorative bench and that thing is self-promotion. Let's add some text into it. What I'm showing you here is also how you can add custom text to street signs. And so, back into procedural objects. Click the plus sign on our slab and then click edit. Now in the main window, choose text customization and then choose add a text field. And then in the box near the top, type out your chosen content. Today we'll be honoring everybody's favorite tutorialist <laughs> and everybody's least favorite singer. You can easily change the color of the font. I'm going for something a little bit more golden and then you can resize the text, change the font to one you subscribed to earlier, spread the spaces between the letters, stretch and squeeze the font and even add basic formatting such as bold and italics. Now you might want to move the text customization box out of the way to see how what you've written actually looks on your creation. You can click and drag the text around the texture until it appears just right in game. And if you can't see your text, just keep moving it up and down, left and right, and you will find it eventually. It is there. Now, note that your text will appear on all faces which use this texture. Now, this isn't so good for us though, as I want a plain reverse side. Luckily, I made a copy of the original slab. So let's go and edit that. We want to narrow this up to a sliver and then move it across to mask out the unwanted text. And that's it. One complete commemorative plaque bench honoring everybody's favorite tutorialist. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching, for commenting, for liking and for subscribing. Don't forget, if you do subscribe to this mod, make sure you click the like button on the workshop for this item because I'm sure Simon would really appreciate it. As for liking this uh, tutorial, it goes without saying, if you could do that, that would be great. Also, it would get me seen by more people. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We are growing and growing and growing, becoming a medium-sized YouTuber. I'm quite pleased with that. Thank you very much. I've been Bombombi. You've been very, very welcome. And I will see you very, very soon.